just wanted to show you who's making all that racket this morning. Look at these little rainbow lorikeets. Beautiful little birds. They're very noisy though, especially when there's a huge flock of them. I've come to see if there's any seed left this morning. Can't get too close to them, they'll probably fly away. They're still not that used to me, not like the cockatoos and the kookaburras. These guys are a little bit shy. them there. Look at those two on the left there cuddling. Little lovebirds, eh? The cheeky little birds. They're very playful, as all parrots are. These ones generally eat nectar from blossoms, but they do eat a little bit of seed and um, insects and things as well, but basically nectar eaters. Alrighty, back to pouring. G'day guys, welcome back. I haven't poured for a week. Today's Sunday, I haven't actually poured since last Sunday. I'm having withdrawals. It's been a busy week for me. I've worked and had a workshop yesterday and just no time for pouring so today is that day and I thought I would do a flip and drag I haven't done a flip and drag for a while you know when you flip them over like that and then you drag down I've been doing mainly three big cups and then just flipping them over and tilting but today I'd really like some lines some striations so that's why I'm going to go with the flip and drag uh, pouring medium today is my usual 70% glue. This is Elmer's Glue All. Elmer's School Glue works just as well. I found 30% uh, water. And then I start with 50-50 ratio. But in saying that, some of the paints are much thicker, some of them are much thinner, so you just have to play with it. This pink is Peony. I've mixed that 50-50, so 50 grams of pouring medium to 50 grams of paint. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colours, 700 grams of paint, which is 25 ounces. This is a 30 by 60 centimetre canvas, 12 by 24 inches. This one here is called Sky, and I mixed that 50-50 as well. This navy is Deep Space. This one's a bit thicker, so it's had... 50 grams of pouring medium to 40 grams of paint because it's a bit thicker. Now this one, this, this is a culprit, cheeky little paint that you are, is so thick, warm yellow. Two parts pouring medium to one part paint, so really, really thin down and it's still leaving a mound. So yeah, really, really thick that one. I've been having a lot of trouble with that one splitting. It's worse than the white. This one is the deep sea, deep sea, as opposed to deep space. It was the same as the deep space, uh, 50 grams of pouring medium, 40 grams of paint. This one, peacock, just 50-50. And my plum that I've made up, also 50-50. I didn't have to change that one. It looks a little touch on the thick side. I think I will just add just a tiny little drop of water to that one. See, that one is mixed with purple, magenta and purple. Magenta is really thin, but then the purple's really thick. So it kind of balanced it out a bit. I'm going to show you that consistency. Yes. Okay. Let's do it. Right. Let's have a look. Can you see the mound on a mound? Don't hold your stick way up here because you're going to get a different effect. Just about an inch off the surface. Mound on a mound. There we go. Okay, hope that helps. So just don't go 50-50. If you know people say this is the pouring medium and you mix equal parts, it doesn't work like that. Depends on your paint. 
So for this size canvas, I would usually use about 15 drops of oil, but because I've got seven colors, oh, that's the other thing I was gonna tell you, no black or white today. I always have black or white or both, don't I? But none today. Um, so just two drops of the treadmill silicone in each, and that would give me 14 drops, which I'm happy with that. One, two, oops, there's a hair. One, whoa, 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 whoa. Settle down. Now, I'm going to have to try and get some of you out because that was just too much. I didn't even squeeze it and it all dropped in. There we go. Let's see if I can get that out of that cloth. Right, no more for you. Being greedy. One, two. One, two. And down we go. So the colours, the order that I've put, I'd really like maybe a pink over the top like a pinky haze over the top so that's why I've gone with my pink first and then I want the pink next to the blue and I also want the pink next to the plum which is way down here so when I start layering again that will be next to the pink so I've got some blues that I've put my yellow in and I've separated those and then I've got my sort of greeny colors so let's hope that works Oh, I nearly poured them in. I haven't even stirred them yet. Give it a really good stir. You've only got two drops in there and the paint's pretty thick so it needs a, a good mix. did make up a tiny little bit of extra of the pale pink. Just an extra 20 grams of pouring medium and 20 grams of paint because I wanted that pink haze. And because the pink's going in first into the cups, probably going to lose a bit of that you know stuck to the bottom of the cup so that's why I just made up a little bit more so that I don't lose all my pink okay let's do it it's been a while since I've done five I can't remember how many how much paint to put in so your first layer you should use about half of your paint so you should have about half left in there and hopefully I'll have enough to do uh, three layers finished off with the pink because I've got a little bit of extra pink. A little bit of the blue. And I put the cups nice and close to each other so that I can just keep going like this. It's faster and then just wipe that one off like so. So what have you guys been doing all week? I know you've seen me every day. I haven't been painting because when I do have a day off like this I'm probably going to do three pours today maybe I've got all my colors set up behind me of what I want to do try some new color combinations changing it up a bit from my usual blues I'm sure you've seen enough blues so just changing it up a bit so I'll probably do as I said three pours today I do need to make some cookies to take to work tomorrow. A couple of the girls at work are vegan and I thought, because I, I do a lot of baking and I take a lot of cookies and fudge and peanut brittle and cakes and all kinds of things into work and these girls, they miss out because they, you know, they're vegan, they don't eat what I bake. So I thought, I wonder if I can change my famous chocolate chip cookie recipe and it's pretty good, if I do say so myself, into vegan. So that's what I'm gonna do after this pour. I'm gonna go and do that. And I'm gonna come back and I'll do another pour. Look at that, there's a little bit of pink left at the top. So changing my butter to Natalex. Uh, the sugar, the flour is okay, no problems with that. The Two eggs I have changed to egg replacer. I never used egg replacer before, so but I'm going to give it a go. I'm, you know, I'm open to experimenting with my baking and my painting. So, uh, egg replacer. It's just a powder, apparently. And uh, you mix it with water. And it gives you the effect, I guess, of a binder, like the eggs. And then, oh, and the chocolate. I can't use regular chocolate regular chop chips so I have upgraded to lint 70% dark lint 
it uh, it doesn't have any milk solids um, it's just cocoa butter so yeah it, it, you know how um, dark chocolate's a little bit bitter so I've accounted for that I've decreased the amount of chocolate in the recipe from 400 grams down to 300 grams and I've added an extra half a cup of sugar as well so just to combat that bitterness from the the lint dark chocolate I don't really like dark chocolate much on its own I, I do find it a bit too bitter but hopefully these girls will like their cookies I'll take them into work tomorrow There's another business for me, isn't it? Baking vegan chocolate chip cookies. All right, there goes the last of my yellow. I've got my placemats here to show you too. I meant to do that before I started. When I flip the cups over, I'll show you. Now, I'm not sure how the green's gonna go in here. I just wanted a little pop of green this dark oceany green colour and I put it next to the yellow because it should be alright next to the yellow shouldn't it? Green and yellow should be alright so it's going to be interesting to see what happens with no black or white because they are my opaques um, I think the pink the pink's an opaque as well so that'll act as my white the warm yellow is a semi-transparent, the blue is a transparent, the sea green is transparent, I think this sky is going to be opaque, the peacock will be opaque no doubt, and the plum, the plum, the plum, what is it going to be? Um, it's going to be a semi-transparent, that plum. So we should get uh, a good mix of, of cells, I think. I haven't got much left of this. Why not? Where did you all go, Peacock? Oh dear. I want some more Peacock. I'm going to make some more quickly. Where's my scale? Move that out of the way. Okay, put that on zero it and I'll just do 20 grams don't need a lot 20 grams of my pouring medium and 20 grams of my paint zero that again six 10, 16, 19, 20. There we go. Perfect. Move that away. Give that a good mix in. I'll just add one drop of silicone oil to that. Actually, no, I won't because this was the one that I dropped in the extra oil, wasn't it? No, I will. Otherwise, the slot's going to have nothing in it. Just one. There we go. Give it a good stir. Okay. Come back. Oh, I nearly tipped it over. Did you see that? I nearly tipped it down on top of myself. Wouldn't that have been terrible? Okay, let's go. There's a little bit of peacock. And that's as easy as it is, mixing in my, my pouring medium with my paint. I am going to do, you guys... A video on how to mix the pouring medium and then how to mix the paint because everyone's asking me for it I just didn't think that you would be interested because it's basically pouring glue into a squeeze bottle adding water and shaking it like how easy is that I didn't think you guys would be that interested I'm not really gonna have enough of this to do all of them I'm just going to do three cups and make more of a statement of it I think just in those ones hopefully I'll get some nice stripy colors today 
and I'm not sure yet if I want a balloon dip or not. It depends. If I'm going to get really, really pretty cells, um, then I will. There's not much left of this one either. I'll just put this in the, these last two. Gonna make sure you divide it really evenly when you're doing a lot of cups. You could change it up a little bit and pour or layer each cup separately and change it up, have different colours. Well not different colours, but different layers in each, in different orders. You could do that. That's my metal bar there. sure that these are right on the edge okay that looks pretty good um, now I'll show you get the paint off my hands before I pick up my coasters uh, this one that was the plum and purple and gold coaster not coaster, placement, it's timber. Um, you can stick some cork on it when it's done, um, when it's um, varnished. And then this was the blue and the silver one. Looks a bit dark at the moment, but once it's varnished, that silver's really going to pop and shine and really be really pretty. So that was that one. And then the green, I'm not that happy with the green. It's quite dark on this half, but again, I think once it's varnished and the gold pops up, that'll be really pretty. So that's that one. Um, behind me, I've got my big round. I just gave it its first, I gave it its first um, coat of varnish today. It's still wet, so it looks a bit icky. Um, but this varnish tends to bring the purple out, so I should get a good amount of purple on that one coming through, because I kind of lost the purple. Okay, uh, it's released already, you can see that. Um, I've sprayed my cups with oil, silicone spray. Let's do this. I don't know if I remember how to flip and drag. Sounds like I'm swearing, doesn't it? Flip and drag. All right, here we go. A little bit on the corners. There we go for that one. I don't really usually like doing that, but we'll see. I've only got 700 grams today. Another one, and I'm not putting the leftovers back in. I don't like to do that. Whoops, that one wasn't fast enough. Go, you good thing. When I am going to have to put a bit back. Whoops. Try not to do that. <laughs> Drip back into your painting. So this was the one that had the extra pink in it. Mm, yeah, these two. And then the, those three had the extra plum in them, didn't they? I didn't tip that one very well at all. Okay, get my little cups, pop them in the bin. Right, that's looking pretty, isn't it? Now, I'm just going to tilt a little bit and then I'm going to torch. I just find I get a better result if I can just cover part of the canvas first. Cover that little corner there with some plum plum. There's a song about that, isn't there? Looks like a sugar and a plum plum plum. 
I don't know where that came from. <laughs> um, blast from the past. Okay, so that's that side done. That was relatively easy. Let's turn it around. So can you see what I mean about the stripes when you do a flip and drag? You get these stripes of colour which I wanted for this particular pour. Um, I think if I'm going to do the balloon dipping, it's nice to have that look. I don't know, I just like it. Okay, let's torch. Now, if you torch too close and too hot, you're going to get really small cells, like a colony of little tiny ones, and you're going to get caterpillars. So keep your torch really high. It takes about 10 seconds for that oil to come through the, the to the surface. So don't torch, torch, torch and think I can't see anything and keep torching. You're going to over torch. So go over it. Wait the 10 seconds for the cells to come up. Settle down, big boy. I know you're excited. You haven't done a painting for a week, have you? But just settle down. Oh dear, I've got some caterpillars there. I must have got too close. I was just telling you not to do that, and then I went and did that. That's all right. I can maybe tilt some of those off. I actually have to tilt. It's always the middle one, isn't it? Look at this, this blobby bit that I've added on. I really don't like doing that. Maybe I can tilt some of that off. Okay. Those cells, those colours are gorgeous. Now I'm going to just torch in the areas that are a bit blank. These little caterpillars, I mean they are so cute though. They, oh, they're, not, they're more like centipedes because they're all separated. They've actually got, they're all the same, they've got this pale pink rings around them. They're so cute. But if I balloon dip, I'll certainly be going over them. Those come up. Looking, looking. And I was expecting a little bit of purple to come through, which is fine with the you know the pinks and the blues together. That's why I didn't add purple because I wanted a bit of purple. Can't see a lot of the yellow, but maybe once I start tilting, I'll be able to see it. There's some yellow cells there. There's some yellow cells there. A bit of a greenish haze through here from the blue and the yellow. Do I want any more cells? I think that's enough. there at all okay um, so this big blobby one here this was here to begin with before I even started tilting he popped up on his own that's why he's a bit bigger so that's why I found see if I had to torch from the beginning they'd all be quite big already so that's why I've, I've decided to cover half the canvas first and then tilt or torch and then tilt the other way so Right, so this, this area is already over. Um, these are going to be problem children. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt this way first to get those to meet up. And then I can go that way and we'll see what happens with those caterpillars. They may go, they may stay. It's a lot more blue than I was expecting it to be. just gonna walk it I don't want to take everything down there at once I want to walk it gently 
Look, those caterpillars went. Did you notice that? While, while you weren't looking, they went. Okay, let me just bring this back and have a look at it. See what I want to do. This big blobby one stretched out. I knew it would, but there's not much you can do about that once your cells appear to begin with. Oh, isn't it gorgeous? Hey, look at those colours. And this dark greeny blue against the, the pale pink. So pretty. This corner's a little bit over, well, not overstretched, but it's a bit concertina. I wonder if I can get over there. I probably can't, you know, all that way. A long way to go but let me see how far I can go and then bring it back I'm not still don't like that corner I'm gonna have to get rid of it it's just too elongated I think because the paint hadn't actually gone over the corner yet I should have pushed it over to begin with. Now I'm just straightening up my lines. Oh, I don't know if I want to dip it. Do I want to dip it? Do I not want to dip it? I don't think so. I think it's beautiful as it is. We don't need to dip everything, do we? Mm-mm. I think it's really gorgeous. That plum, plum with the green through it. Oh, so gorgeous. And I've kept the lines. You can see the lines going straight down. So it's very striated, which is what I wanted. Even through here, that pale pink. And we've got the aqua. So that's, that's exactly what I wanted. Um, yeah. Now I'm going to just torch in a couple of little places just to bring up some little baby cells, just like in here. If you're torching after you've tilted most of your surface and you're not getting any cells, it's because your paint's too thin and there's, the silicone's already come to the surface because the silicone, when the paint is thick and you've got lots of layers, the oil comes up through all those layers. And makes your cells but if your paint's really thin you know you've tilted most of it off there's no paint for the oil to come through so you're not going to get any more cells does that make sense gentle little torch here and there. Got a few little ones here, a few little ones there. I like the, as I've said it before, I like the difference in, in the sizes of the cells. You know, you get some big ones, you get some little ones. would like to open this up here, but I don't think I can. stretching maybe if I turn it around and put my hand underneath I might be able to open it up just a touch I don't think I can really no it's not worth it I'll just leave it so what do you think love 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 it I'll take it down for a close-up because these a little bit of yellow I'm actually surprised. I thought um, I thought I'd get a lot more yellow through, and I was a bit worried. I thought, oh no, it's going to be a, a yucky baby poo yellow painting. But it ain't. Oh, I need to. I didn't even use this. I should check my sides, check my corners. Oh, I need some pink just to fill in there, that little bit there, and a tiny bit there. And then run that under to catch. 
catch all the drips. You don't want those drips drying on the bottom. So make sure you do that. You'll need to do it a couple of times just while the paint's still dripping off. My paint's really quite thick, so it doesn't have a lot of drip off. It'll stay like this. It really won't change. Nothing will, no more will really drip off. So if you're finding that you're leaving your painting and it's just constantly drip, drip, dripping, um, I mean, if it's dripping just off the one side, then obviously your surface is not flat. But if it's dripping off everywhere, then you can pretty much guarantee that your paint is too thin. Oh, I need some of that lovely purple. Where am I going to get the purple from? Purple, where are you? Oh, here's some. There we go. A little bit. It's not exact match, but it's as close as I can find. Okay. Done. Done like a dinner. Love that. Do you guys like this one? All right, let me take you in for a close-up. This is quite busy here. I wonder if I can just move everything down. You've got to be careful though because this up here starts to overstretch then. But uh, that'll do. I'm happy with that. Happy with that. And I got those sides off. You know those extras that I poured on up here? If you don't get them off, you end up with this wriggle. And then you have a lovely blurring of colours. And then this wriggle. And I don't like that. So I always get that off the side. Those uh, little lines of the plum are gorgeous through there, isn't it? Aren't they? Well, it's quite... What aqua? I didn't think it was going to be so sort of bluish. I thought it would be more pinkish. So we've got multicolored cells. The yellow has surrounded a lot of the cells and the pale pink has surrounded a lot of the cells too. I'm going to go up here. More pretty cells. This is the section I really like. The green against the plum. Like, who would have thought? I wouldn't have thought that green and plum would have been good together, but... Oh, look at the strawberry, eh? Red and green. They do work lovely together. And then up here... More of a paler background there because this one had more of a pale pink in it, this section. And then that one up there had more of the plum in it again. And look at the yellow, the yellow around the cells. Really pretty. We've got our little baby cells as well that have popped up afterwards from my torching afterwards. Okay, I'll take you around here and show you from my perspective. Try and get that light out of the way. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed that video. I'm so tempted to balloon dip. No. I can always come back and do it later anyway. Wish you guys could tell me. Look at this corner. I love this corner. Oops. Can we focus? Yes, we can focus on that corner. Pretty, pretty. Okay, I better leave it there. I've got some cookies to go and bake. And uh, I will see you for the next one. Okay, bye for now.